Hi, Advanced Math. We're going to keep uh, working on rates and ratios today. Uh, last lesson we worked on rates and ratios that had fractions in them. We're going to keep doing that. But we're also going to work on ones today. Trickier problems can have non-matching units. And I want to throw that wrench into the mix today. So write this as the title on your next free page. And then unpause, close your notebook, and listen with me. So here's a problem we did last time. Um, we started doing ratio problems, but with fractions in them. And I'm not going to go over necessarily like every strategy to do this. I'll probably use the two that I feel like I see you guys use the most frequency, frequently, just to remind you how it works. Um, proportions always a fave. So if John walks half a mile each one-fourth of an hour, how many miles will he walk in one hour? So with a proportion, and again, I, get, I think this is an easy enough one to probably just figure out in your head, but I want to remind you how the strategies work um, and about the whole complex fraction thing. So I'm going to make my proportions in miles over hours. It's fine if you do hours over miles, too. And I've got two. I've got half of a mile in a fourth of an hour. Remember, we called that a complex fraction, just to remind you of the term. Um, it's not, it's one of those things where it's kind of not okay as an answer. Like, I, I don't want to say half of a fourth, um, like as a number, but as a tool in the proportion strategy, it's, it's still very helpful. So, one half a mile in one fourth of an hour. And we want to know that means how far will he go in one whole hour? And the reason this is helpful is because it still makes for an easy proportion, right? I know that one-fourth times four is one. So I would also multiply my numerator by four. And one-half times four is two. So he would roll two miles in one hour with the proportion strategy. I also love the double number line strategy. Um, and the way that works. <coughs> Excuse me is I make a miles number line and an hours number line. If possible, I always like to do zeros, like zero miles in zero hours. And then we get half a mile in a fourth of an hour. And I want to know how far in one hour. So to get there, I'm just going to keep doing multiples of my ratio. I'm going to say one fourth or half a mile in fourth of an hour. If he does that again, my board's not working real good here. Then it's been one whole mile in one half of an hour. Then it's been one and a half miles in come on, three fourths of an hour. And then it's been two miles in a whole hour. And so that is a nice way to do it, too. So I like those two strategies. There's also the coordinate plane, if you love it, and the tape diagram, if you love it as well. So all we're going to do today, we're going to keep with the same thing, except this is actually the exact same question that I'm going to use for an example, except rather than saying in one-fourth of an hour, we're going to talk about 15 minutes. They're actually the same thing, which is why I chose the connect and chose the I do. But sometimes you'll get these ratio problems where it works like this. Is in one part of the problem, they'll give you information in minutes. And in one part, they'll ask or give you other information in another unit. In this case, hours. I've got minutes and I've got hours. So what I'm going to want to do is if I, if I make my proportion, say, miles, and I'm given minutes, say half a mile in 15 minutes, I've got to just watch out. I don't want to make a proportion where over here I put a 1 because that's not in minutes. I am given 1 in the problem, but that's actually 1 hour. It is not 1 minute. So I've got to make sure my units match in all my proportions, and in this, play, in this case it doesn't. So you can change it either way. I, you know, generally, I would just say whatever is easier. If you want to say, I'm going to change one hour into 60 minutes and do my proportion that way, that's okay.
times 4 times 4, and I get still 2 miles in 60 minutes, which is 2 miles in an hour. So you can change the unit on your outgoing um, rate, or I could say, okay, instead of that, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do the whole thing in hours instead of minutes, which is fine. So I am gonna do one hour, but I have to change that. That's 15 out of 60, which is a fourth of an hour, and that's fine. So I can do both parts of it in hours, or I can do both parts of it in minutes, and I'm gonna get the same thing, right? Because now that's also again times four, so times four. Either way, I get two hour or two miles in one hour, excuse me. Okay, so that's just it. It's just a little wrench to throw in and just say, hey, make sure when you do these problems, whichever strategy you choose, you pay attention to the units because they may or may not match. Open up your notebook. Let's do one together. Let's do that one. Okay, Ron is able to complete nine multiplication facts in 25 seconds. That's pretty fast. How many could she complete at three minutes in the same ratio? So here we are again. I've got 25 seconds, and I've got three minutes. And if I don't pay attention to that, if I just do my ratio in, like, facts over time, you know, I'm going to set up 9 in 25 seconds is equal to how many in 3, and that's not it, because that would be like 3 seconds, right? If this is in seconds in my proportion, then these all have to be in the same unit. It's got to be facts per second, facts per second. I don't want to know how many she can do in 3 seconds. I want to know how many she can do in 3 minutes. Um, seems easier to me in this case to turn minutes into seconds than to turn 25 seconds into a minute. I can do it. It's going to be a fraction of a minute, 25 sixtieths of a minute. I guess I could divide by 5, and that would be 5, uh, do I have five twelfths of a minute. But then if I did that, i got to do 5 twelfths times what is 3. Eh, I don't want to do all that. I think it's going to be easier for me to turn 3 minutes into seconds. But, I, you know, either way is okay. I don't want to tell you one's wrong and one's not. Um... So three minutes is 60, one minute, two minutes, three minutes. So that's 180 seconds altogether. And there you go. 25 times what is 180? I'll use a calculator for that. Uh, 180 divided by 25 is 7 and 2 tenths times. So basically... That means in three minutes, she does this seven and two tenths times to be in three minutes. That's how many sets of 25 seconds are in three minutes. So then I'm going to also multiply that by that seven and two tenths times nine is 64 and eight tenths. So that can't be an answer in a realistic problem, right? I can't. That's what the math gives me. Um, I don't know if you want to give Rhonda the benefit of the doubt and round up or say, well, she couldn't quite do 65, so it's 64. But something like 64 or 65 multiplication facts in three minutes, that is pretty good. I don't know how many you had to do on your times tests back in third grade, but 64 in three minutes, that's pretty good. So there you go. That's all that's different today um, is to keep in mind every once in a while in ratio and weight problems, You'll get things that are in different units. Very frequently, the time is the thing that's in different units, though not always. Um, and just as a reminder, to turn them into the same unit so you can do it. That's it, guys. Um, once you've got the example written down, you feel like you have a good command of it, you're all done. See you tomorrow.